after last night's blowout loss versus the Dallas Mavericks, we have to come to terms and ask the question, did the loss to the Dallas Mavericks expose the current issues with this Bulls roster? And then where do the Bulls go after that loss versus the Mavs? Y'all know we're going to talk about it and break it down. But you know, you got to hear the music first. Come on, yeah. Gang. Shy Bulls Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on today's daily episode. If you're tuned in with me today, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell as well. Now, the Chicago Bulls, they fell to the Dallas Mavericks yesterday and got absolutely whooped and beat around and punked all last night by the Dallas Mavericks. The Chicago Bulls did not look like they were ready. The Chicago Bulls did not come out with enough energy. The Chicago Bulls simply didn't have enough answers for what Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks were about to bring to the Chicago Bulls. If you look at what they were able to do defensively, they ran a zone defense for majority of the game, and the, the Bulls did not do anything to counter that, at least something that was productive. Billy Donovan tried to throw out a couple lineup in different combinations, but it just wasn't good enough. Offensively, the Chicago Bulls against that zone defense, they weren't able to do anything. When those threes weren't falling and Alice Caruso jacking them, Kobe White jacking them, and brick after brick after brick, it was just a bad display of basketball by the Chicago Bulls. It was just pretty much letting us all know after that high that we were on for going on that West Coast trip and going three and one out of those four games, we thought that the Chicago Bulls can somehow start to shift and gain some momentum to push on and, you know, do a couple of things while they were at home these next few games. I believe seven out of nine before yesterday's game were games that the Chicago Bulls will be at home. And we thought that, you know what I'm saying, the Chicago Bulls can carry that momentum over into – being at home and being able to string together some nice games. But we were wrong. At least I was. I know I was, and I ain't I ain't too good to admit that I was wrong about what the Chicago Bulls could be able to do versus the Dallas Mavericks. Now, if we're looking at what really happened versus the Mav, we got to come to the terms and ask these questions. Did the Dallas Mavericks further expose the issues with the current roster on his team? And I will say yes. I think that the Chicago Bulls, don't get me wrong, Nikola Vucevic is a, ser a serviceable, serviceable big man for the Chicago Bulls. Very productive guy, pretty much going to give you a double-double every single night, but there still lies an issue with the big man that you have on this roster. You got Nikola Vucevic, who can stretch the floor and shoot the three, but the problem is, is when he's not shooting it well for the entire season, he's not a threat anymore because teams have watched him all season long brick those three-point shots. Then when you talk about Nikola Vucevic on the defensive side, you see that a guy that gets annihilated in the pick and roll against certain teams to where he's playing drop coverage and the team that he's going against, they smoke him from the three-point line if he steps up. His feet are too slow to not be able to contain some of those guys. And I know there are certain nights to where Nikola Vucevic's legs seem a little lighter. But on some of these crucial games, Nikola Vucevic's legs are real, real heavy. So I think that the Bulls do have an issue on this roster with their big man. Because Nikola Vucevic, how offensively talented he is, is just not good enough defensively. And then when you look at Andre Drummond, who's a little bit better defensively, can go out there and give you some big man rebounds. But the problem is, is he's not a threat offensively unless it's a putback dunk or, you know what I'm saying, something in the post, jump hooks, things like that. He's no threat from the pick and pop spot, you know, in that mid range area. He's no threat from the three point line. So all in all, the Chicago Bulls right now, when it comes to their big man, they're lacking in so many areas. I think it's now is that we, me and C-Dub have kind of been on this train for the last two seasons now that the Chicago Bulls need to really, really invest in this 
the center or this front court, you know, the front court positions of the team so you can provide something or add a little bit more versatility to that front court. Right now, I think that you have two guys who can give you stuff on most nights. But against the younger and bigger athletic bigs, Drummond typically finds himself in foul trouble, and Nikola Vucevic finds himself in the blender. That's just what it is for these big men for the Chicago Bulls. So they got exposed, and that's an issue that the Chicago Bulls have been plagued with. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say plagued with, but it should be some concerns that have been there for the last two seasons. Now, another thing that we got to talk about is the three-point shooting of the Chicago Bulls. Though it is much improved, though you see guys like Ayodo Sumu, Kobe White, DeMar DeRozan is now hitting them a little bit more often. After that, there's no one really that you can look at and say that this guy is going to provide us with three-point shooting every single night. You know what I'm saying? I know that's a bit of a, you know, admiration. You know, for a guy to come out there and provide you some solid three-point shooting every single night. But there's a reason why certain teams have three-point specialists on their team. That's their job. We're going to be three and D guys, and we're going to shoot these threes no matter how many we miss. But the, 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 the problem for the opposing team when you have that three-point specialist or have that known three-point shooter is that that guy will continuously stretch the floor. The Dallas Mavericks played zone. They said, okay, cool, shoot that thing. Ayodo Sumu, you going to be able to make it consistently? Kobe White, are you going to be able to make, make them consistently? DeMar DeRozan, we know you're a mid-range assassin. We know that you like to take threes. Are you going to shoot those things consistently? You know what I'm saying? We're not going to count on Nikola Vucevic to come say today. We know Alice Caruso can make some and pretty much get hot and streaky, but we're going to look make you guys shoot the three. And then if you talk about the guys coming off the bench, you got a bunch of young guys, which I'm not against. Let's make that clear. I want to see my young guys earn opportunity. But there's no veteran off the bench that's going to be like, I right, let me carry the load. Uh, Javon Carter has been an awful signing. Let's keep it a grand. And he was supposed to be the guy that come in and provide that three-point shooting that the Chicago Bulls need. Or at least add on to it. That has been non-existent. You know what I'm saying? And it's been challenging, to say the least for the Chicago Bulls to make sure that they are competitive from the three-point line night in and night out. It's been multiple games to where you've seen this season, you know what I'm saying, even in one of the last games versus the Los Angeles Clippers. The Chicago Bulls were able to fight, but in the end, the shots just wasn't falling well enough to stay in the game and close out that game versus the Los Angeles Clippers. And one more issue with the Chicago Bulls is that there is a lack of shot creators on this team. Now, I understand we can point to DeMar DeRozan as being one of those shot creators. I understand we can point to Kobe White as being one of those shot creators. But you need multiple guys and sometimes three or four guys who can create those shots or be consistent enough to knock down shots when they are open and when they are available for that said player. Now, if you're looking at what most teams have been doing against the Chicago Bulls, the game plan has shifted to DeMar DeRozan and Kobe White. A lot of the times you see certain guys step up, and then on other times you see it's just not good enough, and the way that teams are playing the Chicago Bulls, they are simply trying to take away the explosiveness from Kobe White because they know how hot he can get and the dominance from the mid-range from DeMar DeRozan. So there lies another issue of another guy who can get his own shot or at least can be consistent enough to put pressure on the opposing team so in all the loss to the Dallas Mavericks the Dallas the Dallas Mavericks did further expose the issues with the current roster but it is what it is ladies and gentlemen let's not get all up in arms and act like it's the end of the world because this is the this this is the Chicago Bulls they are who exactly who we thought they were I understand that some people are like, Bobby, you was getting a little ahead of yourself a few nights ago when you, when you dropped your daily episode. I was getting a little ahead of myself. But it was just, you know, just thinking down the road. But at the end of the day, I know what this team is. I know what the potential could be. But I've still got a waiver on the side of tempering those expectations. And sometimes when you get too high, the Chicago Bulls going to let you know exactly who you are. That's just what it is. Hey. But where do the Chicago Bulls go now after this loss? Hopefully back home and looking in the mirror. 
You know what I'm saying? To see how you can finish this season strong. Hopefully the Chicago Bulls understands that these games that are coming up, especially in your next game tomorrow night versus the Indiana Pacers, is a crucial game. This is one of the teams that's right there within that 7 and 10 spot right with you, and the win versus this team pushes you closer to trying to leapfrog these guys within those standings. So if you get to that play-in, now all you got to do is win one game versus having to win two if you end up as a 9 or a 10 seed. So the Chicago Bulls got to come out here and handle business. The Chicago Bulls, they've been through this all season long. This is how the season has gone for them. You get several good games out of Chicago Bulls. You get some competitive games against some of the better teams around the NBA. And then occasionally you get some butt kickings for the Chicago Bulls or those games that make you consider like, damn, are we really trying? Or damn, can we ever get over 500? It's like once the Chicago Bulls get close to being a 500 team, the basketball guys, the Chicago Bulls as an organization, the players say, hell, to hell with it. We did good enough. We got the fan base hype. Screw that. Let's lose, let's lose the next two games. <laughs> so that's how it's been going for the Chicago Bulls. I understand. I understand, like, there's some frustration among us all as Bulls fans, but this is what we have. This is what we have. I mean, like, me personally, this is what it would be like if the Chicago Bulls were to go out and blow it all up. You're going to see some players that's going to shine on certain nights, and then you're going to see some games to where you see there's nobody available to make it a a game. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Because the defense, when, when when you have a lack of talent or developed talent, there will be some huge challenges when you go up against a team like uh, the Dallas Mavericks, who has Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, a bevy of shooters, and some athletic-ass bigs. You fall into challenges. That's just, It was just like right out of the All-Star break when we seen the Bulls go against the Celtics. Completely overmatched. Because the Bulls are not on those tier of teams. That's just that's just what it comes down to. The Bulls have a lot of work to do, but that work will not be completed during this season. That work is going to come in the offseason if the front office decides to. And I know there's going to be some people, why are you not saying fire Billy Donovan? Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Donovan is here for years to come. I'm not going to keep beating this same drum. Billy Donovan is here for years to come. We do, he signed an extension. We still don't know. Still don't know how long the contract is or what's the intentions, how much money he got paid. I don't really care about the money aspect of it, but how many years of an extension did you give head coach Billy Donovan? So that's why I'm not going to beat the drum and come out here and say Billy Donovan absolutely has to be fired because, ladies and gentlemen, it ain't happening no time soon. But, hey. The Bulls got a lot of work to do with this front, with this, uh, with their front court for show. Sure. There's been a lot of investment in the guards and the wings. It's time to invest in some young athletic bigs. It's a damn shame to see Daniel Gafford be over there and be so athletic and put up 26 consecutive shots for the Dallas Mavericks, become a lob threat, be a uh 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 a, a, a shot deflector or change a shot within the paint on the defensive side. It's bad. Is, is, is much to be desired for a young athletic big. I will say this before I get up out of here. Billy Donovan, front office, Acme. When are we going to call up Adama Sanogu to see what we have in him? I mean, we understand where the season is going now. Is it going to take for another injury? I don't want to hope for that. We don't want to wish for that. We want to see guys, you know, earn opportunity. Rightfully so. I'm not the guy to make those decisions to say that Adama Sanogu has earned this opportunity for minutes in the NBA, I don't make those decisions. But I am one to say, what else do you have to lose? What else do you have to lose? So play the young man. Let's see what he can bring us. Let's see if he can add a different dimension for the Chicago Bulls and you can start moving this thing forward and chugging along. That's just all I'm saying. But, hey, that's it for me today, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you leave your comments below. If you want to call in and be a part of our mailbag episodes to where we play your voicemail during our episode and we react to it, go ahead and call in 773-242-9219. It's another episode of Shy Boys Podcast. I'm Bobby. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. But show. Come on, yeah. Gang.